This is IET 806, uh, Lecture 5, Methods and Classes, Part 3. I decided to add it a third part to this lecture segment, uh, to this lecture series, uh, mainly so that I could flesh out the, um, the stuff about missile. Okay? Now, just to recap, we have an armed rocket. We've created a class as, that's a subclass of rocket, right? Um, but the class doesn't really do anything. Um, it just constructs an armed rocket. Um, and um, the only reason that we'd want to do that, just to repeat, is to define some new capabilities or perhaps override old capabilities. We're not going to show overriding at the moment. What we are going to do is add some capabilities. So the capability that we're going to do, add, is to add uh, the capability for armed rockets to shoot missiles. Now, missile is a new class that I'm going to develop through the course of this lecture. And what it does is it takes information from the location and orientation of the armed rocket and then shoots a missile from the location of the armed rocket out into the field. That missile at the moment won't really do much, but it will at least be constructed, and I'd like to show a little bit of that. The reason why we're constructing a missile is stated here on the slides. Missiles should also be objects because the object-oriented solution for everything is to make a, things that, that are in the virtual world that we're creating correspond to software things. So a missile is a thing, you know, a bullet flying around or more than one bullet flying around. Those are things and they ought to have their own chunk of code with their own information all by themselves. Like asteroids and rockets, the missile class should know how to draw itself. That is to say, code inside the class should take care of the task of drawing it onto the screen. A missile is similar to a rocket with position, orientation, draw method, etc. So our armed rocket fire method just creates and returns a missile, and where it returns it to is the draw function. And if the draw function has a missile, it just keeps drawing it. So here's the fire method. We've shown this already, and let's go to uh, processing in a sec. And uh, basically the idea is inside armed rocket there's this method named fire. It returns a missile uh, and basically what it does is takes the X pause, Y pause, and rotation fields from armed rocket, copies uh, those into the constructor for missile, calls the constructor as you can see right here, and hands the constructed object back to this variable M, which is then returned immediately to the color of fire. We haven't shown the color of fire that yet, but we'll do that shortly. And also, we would need to draw uh, code in the loop, uh, have code in the loop that draws missiles. Just once again, fire is a factory method because it constructs missiles. So to create a missile, we can take a lot of technology from rocket and from armed rocket. Uh, the fields, a lot of the same data. The constructor is almost identical to rocket, and the, really the difference between missiles is its behavior in the interaction with the rest of the system. We won't show uh, it blowing stuff up, but uh, the ge geometry is going to be different, is what we see here. Oops, sorry. The geometry is different, and there's no wraparound. Once a missile hits a boundary, it just disappears. And later on, it would uh, you would have it blow stuff up. So now let's go to processing. And so, uh, once again, we can see here the content of our rocket. So there's the constructor, and it's once again just called super, uh, so that it just picks up our uh, rocket's construction technique. And arm rocket has the fire method, and that's just what we showed on the slides. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add code for missile, uh, and it'll take a lot of technology from, uh, from rocket. So... The first thing is, of course, to create class missile. And uh, just uh, open and close brace, right? So at least now we have, uh, uh, I don't know if you've been watching, but here that was uh, underlined with uh, an error. Um, and there's still an error here, and that is there's no constructor created, but at least the missile problem has gone away. So now what I'm going to do is uh, take some fields, and uh, we're just going to copy those. I've got another text editor off, off screen that I'm going to copy some stuff into, so it's going to appear really quickly. So there, what I've done is I'm just going to hit uh, uh, the 
the cleanup function so that it, it reformats nicely. And um, so this is very similar to what we have, have in Rocket and uh, what we have also in, um, in, um, in Asteroid. So it has a rotation field, x pause and y pause, x velocity and y velocity. Now unlike Rocket, the, the velocity won't be updatable by anything. Once you fire a missile, off it goes. So not, let's now create a constructor for it. And this is the same constructor that we would typically see for, uh, for rocket. So we just say missile uh, float initial x, and I'm just keeping it short, initial y, initial rotation, very short names. Okay, so we got a constructor, and it's just going to be x pause equals i x, and uh, y pause equals i y, and uh, uh, rotation equals uh, i r. All right, so there we go, and uh, we have uh, the items there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm then now going to do a, a draw me function. And what it's going to do is uh, push matrix, right, as before, translate. And uh, what we are going to do is we are going to do something uh, a little bit silly. We're just going to do a rect. And we're going to have that be uh, 0, comma, 0, comma, um, 20, comma, 5. We'll find out whether that uh, does what we want. And there we go. Okay, so we've created a, a super simple missile. Uh, uh, so anyway, there it is. Um, the other thing we need to do when we construct this thing, well, first, let's test it out. You'll notice I haven't made a huge amount of commitment to a, any velocity. There's no velocity actually in this thing. When we fire this, fire this missile, it'll just sit there, which is kind of stupid, but at least it gets something rolling. rolling. So let's press play. And so, you know, the good news is now we have a rocket, you know, that spins and it moves around, uh, but it doesn't do anything. Um, and there's no, no means to fire it, you know. So it just moves around and that's all we got. So let's just stop that and go back to the screen. Okay, so uh, just now let's pay attention back to missile. So it constructs it and draws it. Now, we haven't actually called the draw function yet anywhere, um, so we'll just have to deal with that in a second. So let's, uh, let me, let's just uh, scroll back up. I'm going to scroll back up to the draw function, and what I'm going to do is I am going to um, uh, add another key that calls fire. And I'm just going to copy this and uh, I have created an error there. And just create yet another else if clause, but instead of looking for space, I'm going to say F. And So I suspect you will probably imagine that um, if I were to do this, the problem is the missile M 
the scope of that missile of that variable is only within these two braces. So this isn't a good solution. So instead, what I need to do is I need to move this declaration uh, into the global namespace, which is up here along with asteroids. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy that, put it here, declare it there, and you know, clean it up. And uh, what I'm going to do is no longer declare it there. And uh, I'm going. Uh, the other problem that I would have is if I create a missile and then try to draw it, everything's cool. But if I haven't created it then uh, yet, then calling m dot draw uh, without a created missile is just going to cause a, a, a screw up. So I'm just going to have to deal with that. So what I've decided to do to deal with this problem of what how can I draw a missile if it's not there? I've created this boolean called m fired. I've initialized it to be false. Okay, so the corresponding thing in draw is if m fired, then m dot draw me. Now, this is a particularly ugly solution. It's an ugly solution because I have to have an extra variable sitting around saying, did I create this missile? Um, and uh, that's not a great way of doing things. It's not a great way of doing things. So one of the things I can, uh, but let's just kind of work it through. Okay, so this is the only place in which we assign a value to m fired, and that is when we call r one dot fire return that value to m, then we set that to be true. So the reason why this is ugly is that we've kind of got this extra variable that it's about the variable's existence. Um, so that's not ideal. But anyway, let's fire it up. So there we go. We have our rocket once again. And we can rotate it. And we can hit space. So it can fly through space. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is hit the letter F. And there's a, you know, there's a missile. Now it's not moving, it's fired. And if I hit F again, I, let me, uh, my ro rocket's moving a bit fast, so. And if I hit fire again, and I hit fire again, you know, and I get these kind of missiles just kind of littering the space, but only one at a time. So at least the technology of creating an missile and getting it to be drawn in this uh, screen is is there. So first, let me fix the geometry of that up because I think it's a little bit stupid. So let's just stop that. And I'm kind of making this up as I go along. And the drawback with, with that technique is that you end up with stuff that doesn't look right. So we're going to change this to 3 and change that to, uh, I don't know, that's 15, so that the missile is actually smaller than the rocket. That would be nice. Let's fire this on. It, let's run this program again and, uh, you know, rotate the rocket a bit, get it, get it moving a bit, and then hit fire. So at least the missile is, you know, drawn in a plausible location. Right? Okay. So at least it doesn't look ridiculous. The next thing to do is to get this thing to actually move. So let's just do that. So the proper place to deal with this problem of a missile moving is here in draw me. And as I said before, we hadn't done anything with velocity x and velocity y. OK. so. The first thing we need to do is to get some kind of representation of velocity. And we already have code for that. And I, behind the scenes, went down and copied this stuff in Rocket. And now I'm just going to paste it. It's kind of a hacked, hacked solution. But once again, we have this thing. Get the current milliseconds, right? Uh, compute the difference of the current milliseconds and the previous milliseconds. Uh, and um, um, use that to multiply by velocity. We haven't done anything with the velocity, 
but so up here at construction time is the right spot to do something with velocity. So using the same geometric logic that we have from firing thrusters and so on and so forth, what I'm going to do is copy and paste the stuff from there. And it says velocity, that code said velocity x equals velocity x plus time some factor. We don't actually have an initial value here. We're setting the first value. So what I'm going to do is take sine and cosine. Remember, cosine has to be negative because y is directed down. And I'm going to multiply that by, instead of 1, I'm going to multiply that by 3. OK. And that velocity, I'm assigning it here, not because I, you know, have a particular uh, uh, goal of, um, uh, you know, playing with it, but because once you fire the, uh, the missile, it's, got, it's fi really, it's firing a bullet. Um, um, you can't direct it, and it doesn't have any smarts, and it is just a bullet that goes off into space and continues on traveling. So let's just do that. And um, so the velocity that it gets is the velocity of the rocket. It really ought to take the, the actual velocity of the actual rocket and add that to the bullet, but we're just going to ignore that. Uh, you know, when you shoot a bullet from a moving object, it picks up the momentum of the object at the actual time that you fire it. We're going to pretend that's not an issue here. We're not going to try to do Newtonian physics too deeply. So let's just press play. And once again, here's our rocket. We can turn it. We can get it to move around. And we are going to fire a bullet, which moves super, super slowly. So our guesstimate of uh, a factor of three is not good enough. So I'm going to go over here and change that to be 30. But at least it's sort of heading in the right direction. So let's stop it, restart it, and fire a rocket. get it to move. And I suspect what's going on is that it's moving way too fast. So let's go to 10, 10, So clearly I have kind of some kind of screw up. Right, there we go. So the little technical problem that we have here Alrighty. So um, I've been doing a little bit of behind the scenes work here. So let me just recap where we stand. Um, we construct a missile with rotation give it the x and y position and the rotation of the rocket, and give it this velocity. I have behind the scenes adjusted that from 30. Uh, I showed you I had it, it being at uh, 30. It's now here at 5. And when I was doing this, I noticed the following bug. Let me just demonstrate it. So right here, you see a missile. Bam, there's a missile. Great, everything's cool. Here's a missile. That's interesting. Why is it far away? Here's another missile. And another. Well, I'm hitting the F key, but nothing seems to be happening. Well, there's one right there. And so what's happening is that when I fire the missile, each time I fire it, I seem to be getting it to be farther and farther away from the rocket. So what's going on? Well, it took me a bit of time to find this, and that's why I paused this, because I'm thinking, that's strange. How come that's happened? It turns out that the stuff, and this is a, a great example of what to watch out for when you copy and paste code, even if you built it yourself from another segment, in that the assumptions that you bring in doing that copying create problems. So the thing I stole from Rocket 
is this thing, last draw of milliseconds. Because what I'm attempting to do is to account for the actual time it took to draw an individual frame, multiply that by a velocity, so it can get close to accurate time. When constructing a rocket, the assumption behind the construction of a rocket is that the rocket is constructed at the, at the time that the computer program starts, you know, during setup, essentially. But that's not how missile works. Missile is constructed at any time through the runtime of the program. So setting last draw milliseconds equal to zero, and then down here in the drawing function, using last draw milliseconds um, and uh, this computing the time since last draw being current milliseconds, current milliseconds minus last draw milliseconds results in that last draw milliseconds being being used as zero. So the first time you say last time since last draw, that's uh, current milliseconds, whatever it is, minus last draw milliseconds, that's cur the current amount of time the program is run. And the outcome is it, of this is that every time you fire a missile, the missile gets farther and farther away because it's being drawn at a velocity that is, uh, you, you know, accounts for 10, 20, 30 seconds worth of flying time. So that's a little problem. So instead, what we need to do here is last draw millis. equals millis. So that is a, a great example of a mistake that was made by virtue of the um, a, a wrong assumption. At construction time, what I should always do is make sure that you're establishing things correctly. And I didn't set the initial value to something correct here, and that caused this strange behavior. Now that I got last draw millis, set to the current time at, of construction, hopefully we'll get a different, different behavior. So let's just start that. And, sorry, move our rocket around, fire a missile, move our rocket around, fire another missile, fire another missile, fire another missile. And every time I hit the F key, I get a missile showing up at the right spot. We still have the problem that the missile is moving too slowly, so let's fix that. Let's go back to the number we had before, 30, 30, 30. Uh, now, the missile is going eh, a little slow still, so let's uh, change it to 100. There goes the missile. It's a decent, decent and speedy missile. So, it's yeah, it could be better. Let's do two hundred. So, what you end up fi finding yourself having to do, particularly when you're building dynamic things like this, is you end up having to kind of tune the numbers. Um, and uh, in the real asteroids game, there would be a kind of a maximum speed for the rocket such that it wouldn't catch up to its own bullets. So anyway, we do this and we get, you know, pretty good uh, missile velocity and, uh, you know, it goes in the right direction. Now, there's this stupid little problem, and that is I only have one missile and a missile that is, that is, it, that is in flight can be canceled by me just, you know, hitting the F key again. And the reason for that is that I have storage for only one missile, and every time I hit the fire button, I reuse that variable with the newly constructed missile, and I just disappear in the old one. That's not a great solution either, um, but we'll be talking about techniques to deal with the storage of more than one missile in the next lecture segments. All I've been doing here is giving an, ind an indicator as to what you would need to do in order to construct a missile and get it to move around the scene. I, of course, had this bug that I created, which was forgetting to construct, at construction time, set the last draw of to the actual time at the moment of construction. I just kind of 
lazily and stupidly forgot to uh, to 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 set the initial value there. Once I did that, then the code that I've got here works correctly. Okay, so we've stolen a lot of code there from Rocket and customized it for the purposes of missile. One of the big things is that the missile travels somewhat faster than rockets do most of the time. Um, and so we have, an, uh, you know, not a great solution, but at least an incremental solution towards something better. Another point that I've kind of illustrated kind of in a sort of semi-decent way is when you've got a piece of code that at least does something, test it right away. That's a vitally important thing for everyone to do is try it out, test it, and as soon as you run into a problem, figure out what's going on. I pressed pause while I was figuring out why the missile was starting off further and further away from the rocket, and that took me about 20 minutes to figure out, um, mainly because I've done this stuff in the, recently. I last did this the last time I, I offered the course, um, and it just took me a bit of time to figure out what my stupid problem was. Um, so every time you, you build some code, you know, get you know, no more than a page of the, like what you see here. Try it out, get it to work, and get it to work to the way that you expect it to. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. And uh, so that's the end of our live demo. And that's the end of our little missile lecture here for IIT 806.